I want to say something a bit personal in the answer in relating my answer to that. I um, I grew up in um, Schenectady, New York, um, in the period immediately after World War II, and my family lived in a house that was near the locomot American Locomotive Company factory, um, and so it was ex it was extremely dirty when the when it would snow the snow would turn black uh, almost immediately. Um, but it also turned out that behind our house was the Union College Arboretum. And there was a gate between our house and the Arboretum. And so at, as a young boy, I spent a lot of time in the Arboretum and, and I formed a, a profound affection and love for nature. And um, fast forward quite some time uh, in the uh, sort of 70s and early 80s, 1980s, um, I came to the view that the current economic system, the, pro the so-called progress system and growth system, was destroying the things that I loved the most. And so I started to look for an alternative way of thinking about economics and progress and so forth. And so I was very drawn to what I think is the self-evident idea that the economy is embedded in and part of Earth's biogeochemical systems. That seemed to me to be completely uncontroversial. And I thought if we, if we could start with a, both a, a sense of the limits of nature and a respect for nature as part of the economic system, that we might be able to slow and hopefully stop the rate of the destruction of the natural world. Um, and that we could achieve a much more fair uh, position with respect to future generations and with respect to other species who are living now, as well as have a more just uh, society in general. current status of ec ecological economics, I think, is um, somewhat confused. It's kind of, uh, it's, it's sort of lost its way, the, the, the distinction between ecological economics and environmental economics has become unclear. And the, the movement to really in, do a lot of work in, within the paradigm of valuation of, of e eco ecosystem services, I think has served a lot to blur that line and so the, the sort of uh, clear conceptual foundation of ecological economics and its mission have, um, have become um, difficult to distinguish from mainstream economics in many applications, not at all. We need to go back to, in my, in my view, go back to the notions that humans are part of the, of the, of the natural communities on the earth. Uh, it's not just the economy is embedded in the biogeochemical processes of the earth, so are we. Right? And we are part of a very long, complex evolutionary process, of, of, or co-evolutionary process with other species and with this, with this planet. And so we, we need to ground ourselves in the sort of overwhelmingly widely accepted evolutionary paradigm of current science and start from there. But that, that has a number of both operational consequences. That is, we have to start with physics, chemistry, and biology as the key sciences that underpin ecological economics. But we all, there are also certain ethical consequences with that, which is, I, I think, this notion of, of the embedded person, which I call, we have to start with the idea of membership, that we're members of the human and natural communities. We have to start with the, with the old idea that's built into ecological economics of, of householding, of having responsibility for the well-being of life. So a good husband or wife keeps the house clean for the family, right? And prepares good food and things. But we need to think of that as the metaphor for the human relationship to the planet, right? That we are, we are it's our household and we should care for it. But our doesn't mean human, it means all living things. It's the, live, the household of all living things. And then third, we have to take a very long view about what makes life possible. And as all ecological economists know, that Jujescu Rogan's insights into what makes life possible are, are, are basically low entropy sources of things that come from sunlight or things that come from stored sunlight, coal, oil, natural gas, and so forth. So I think we have to have a virtue of entropic thrift. Right, of, of caring for life over the very long period and what makes life possible.
I found so far, I found the conference very useful. It's been very good, in my opinion, to have the um, the uh, biophysical economics conference, if I'm saying the right title, uh, as part of this, because that's an integral, foundational element of ecological economics. Um, so I've, I found that useful. I think that work is very important, but I also think it, that it is very partial, right? and it, it takes a, a portion of the portfolio of ecological economics and does a very good job with it. But it doesn't doesn't see the whole thing. So I think that's been that sort of pluralism is great because it keeps the foundation of ecological economics in science. Right? I think the the um, things that have kind of blur over into environmental economics are part of this process of, of diffusion of mission and diffusion of, of um, what what we're trying to accomplish. I think neoclassical economics is pretty much a complete failure and it can't be repaired. It's sort of like a car that's been fixed and fixed and fixed, but it's a long way to say we need a new car. Well, I think ecological economics started with a very broad question. What would economics be like if you accepted the current scientific view of the world, which is fundamentally integrated by the notion by the concept of evolution but what's what's happened in the work of, of Herman Daly who's a close friend of mine and was a colleague of mine at University of Maryland when I was there in fact I, I hired him when I was head of the environment program what Herman has done and I think what Josh has done and many other people is they sort of taken they've got their toe in the water right but they haven't jumped into the lake um, because once you accept the notion that that the universe is a great long-term evolving system that's an entirely different conception of how things work than what most of, of contemporary, what most of the contemporary disciplines are based on, like law, governance, finance, economics, ethics, and to some extent religion. So that once you start with ecological economics and this relationship between ecological economics and science, you really have to open up your portfolio of interest to include the foundations of all of those disciplines and some others that are too complicated to mention. So, um, time to take a swim, to continue the metaphor, right? And so the, the journey has really, has really just begun. And it's not necessarily all pleasure, right? Because many of the things that we treasure in our culture are threatened by a re-examination of its foundations. And that may account at least in part for the, the the uh, um, lack of interest in a rigorous ex exploration of the consequences of, the, of ecological economics. But ecological economics is fundamentally a, re a revolutionary set of ideas, and bad, that revolution is sorely needed by this culture. And so that's the unfinished journey. And, and this book is an exploration of some dimensions of getting a little further down the track.